back. This is Riggle's Picks. I'm Rob Riggle. With me, as always, Darren Leader. Uh, and I say with me, I mean up in Canada, doing his thing. Um, I I'm, I am doing my thing. I, I'm on a, a fishing and golfing uh, expedition for awesomeness. See, and he knows. This is what kind of cuts, Gary. Cuts like a knife. He knows I love golfing, and he knows I love fishing. Yeah, so he's rubbing it in our face while we're here working in yeah. the office, like you know, adults and yes. professionals. Thank you. He is on a fishing and golfing expedition. Is it because is, I, is it because I shattered my leg? Is this, is this because I shattered my leg? You afraid I'd be dead weight on your trip? No. Uh, that took a long time. Uh, I was, Did you I hear that? Afraid. That was quite. That was quite a pause. I think I would be afraid you'd be dead weight regardless if your leg was broken or not. Well, that's not no, accurate. Guy. That's. that's it's certainly not nice. Yeah, that's not nice or accurate or fair. When I say dead weight, I mean like sometimes I like to go, you know, have fun. And if I say, "Hey, Riggle, you want to go have fun?" You usually, when we are hanging out, you're like, "No." Um, so, hey, Darren, like, if if you're going for nice, look behind you. What's behind him? Well, nice is because he's just running away from the nice. <gasps> Oh my God, oh, that's a see. lake. Now he's visually rubbing it in. Oh, look at the lake. Look at the clouds and the oh, and the blue sky and the lake, and it's all materializing. And the foliage. Oh, it's beautiful. And that's the my great foliage. foliage. Well, anyway, we're all we're all super stoked for you, Darren, and we hope you catch a lot of fish and make a lot of birdies. Thank you. I don't believe you. You're sincere, but thank you. That was sincere. Gary saw my face. Looks sincere yeah, but to me. Anytime you, okay. Well, look, let's just do this. Um, if I was there with you right now, yeah, um, I wouldn't be having as good a time as I normally am right now. So <laughs> um, let's just pretend I'm there. <laughs> hey, by the should... way, uh, uh, we have a fantastic guest today. Do you want me to tell you who it is? Uh, can I guess? Sure. Okay. I'm, we're going to ask uh, a yes or no question. Is it a singer? Well, it's a person, so you don't say it. Well, you know about pronouns these days, right? Well, I don't really. Do. I, I'm, I mean, I <laughs> do, but I, I do. Not. Yeah, it's confusing. But here's are the thing. They, are, are ask me another. Singer? Ask me the question again. What is it? Okay. Are they a singer? They have sang in their life. Are they an actor? They are an actor. Are is it a is it a male? It is a male. That's it, is though. He... That's it. That's the only, only clues. Jake Johnson. <laughs> Dang. Dang. That was impressive. That's amazing. I just told you I need a couple questions. That was uh, that was unprecedented. I, Jake Johnson well, from The New Girl. Yeah, from New Girl. And from uh, a lot of other movies and shows. How did you do that? And from his new podcast, We're Here to Help with Gareth Reynolds. That's right. That's right. That's... You know, uh, I, I don't know how I do it, Rob. That was weird, because I only gave you, like, three clues, and they weren't even that good. I don't really need a lot. I'm Thank impressed. You. I'm impressed. Well, I'm excited to talk to Jake. That's, can you do that little trick, like, to make money? Can, you, can we use this power you have to benefit? That's the difference. That's the difference. I only use my powers for good. I don't, I'm not out for myself, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm... I'm just then make like, make me the money. You don't have to make money for yourself. Make me some like think of a way. What's the next be, what's the next big idea to make money? I Go. can't tell you. I can't tell you. Oh my god. It's just it goes against the code because we got a group of guys that do this. We got a group of guys that like we can prognosticate, we can see the future. We can you know, we got telekinesis, we got uh, You ESP. don't have telekinesis. No, dude. I, okay. I don't have telekinesis, Rob. Okay. Bend this straw. If you can really no. No. bend it. I don't want to. <laughs> How did you do that? Well, it's called telekinesis, dude. That's what I got. And hey, by the way, did you yeah. see, since we're talking about you're part of a group of special people, did you happen to see, um, and this is real because it was on Instagram, so we know it's it, we know it's real. Cool. Did you happen to see? I guess it was the Canadian Defense Minister came out and said there are aliens walking among us. He said there are little grays. 
He said there's all these, it. He said, but there's also these ones they call Nordic blondes. Oh, I and, did see that. And and he and he said they're they're walking down the street with this, and he said there you wouldn't even know the difference. You can't tell. Yeah, the grays are the ones in the movies. Yeah, and the Nordic blondes are like you don't know. Yeah. So now, do you buy this or and and are you a Nordic blonde? Well, I'm more of a brunette, but I like to keep it short. I will tell you this. Uh, it's hard after this many years of being alive and and not believing that aliens were walking among us mm -hmm. to all of a sudden go, well, if that guy said it, it must be true. It's a, I don't know. Like my serious answer, dude, I don't know because I don't know. Do well, this you? is what makes me, this is what makes me so mad what right now. Think? This is what, this is what's got me infuriated. Okay. It, okay. If this is true, it's the, let's just start with UFOs, unidentified flying objects. They've been they've been part of our world for a long time. The ancient aliens. They have you know hieroglyphics. They have all kinds of stuff, right? They, so now the government said, you know, we don't know what you're talking about. They're not real. They're not real. Finally, they said, okay, look, we don't. There are UFOs. We don't know what they are. That's the story of the century. We have unidentified flying objects hovering around, doing things, and we don't know what they are. We can't account for them. We're just clueless. We think they're aliens, but nobody knows. That's the story of the century. Nobody gives a shit. The government, have we been on the government's case? You're hiding, you're lying, you're hiding, you're lying. They finally come out and go, you know what? They're UFOs. Everybody goes, oh, okay. What time's the Chiefs game? I got I to gotta get some coffee before that. Nobody gives a shit, right? That doesn't make sense. Now they want to, now they tell us, oh, yeah, well, now uh, they walk among us and all this stuff. I, I don't know. Listen, here's the thing. In order for me to believe at this point... Okay, I do believe there are unidentified flying objects. Sure, I mean they're, they're, the government even says there are. I I concur with that. As far as little green men, as far as aliens, I'm going to need. This is what I'm going to need. I'm going to need a spacecraft to land in daylight or night. I don't care, but visible to the human eye, thousands of witnesses, and someone to walk off the spaceship and say hello. That's what I'm going to need. I'm going to need it because it hasn't happened yet. Think about that. All these sightings, all these interactions, all the, but no one has come out and said, hey, we're from another planet. Nice to meet you. No. Right. Right. All, it's like, you know, the, the problem with, with what you are saying um, is that, like, we have things that are right in front of our eyes and some people go, I don't believe it. Like, the, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know what to believe anymore, man. It used to, like, and I'm going to sound like an old man right now, but it used to be so straightforward or what seemed to be very straightforward. The light is on or the light is off. Now, the light might want to be on, but it doesn't know if it feels like being off yet. Yeah. And it's like, dude, I'm with you. I'm going to need to shake hands with one of these Nordic blondes. I'm yep. going to need to shake hands with a little gray. Yeah. But, to, I, I mean, I don't know. With all the AI stuff, is that even like? Is that even going to show me that it's real? I don't yeah. know. It's breaking. Yeah, there's something you, going on. Do you do you care? And I mean this seriously. Like, does it matter to you in being at this phase of your life? Um, being at this phase of your life, like, does it matter if there are aliens or not to you? No. No, it doesn't. Not unless they not unless they mean us harm. It doesn't mean anything. Right. Do you think you'd feel different if you were like 17 right now and you're like, oh, shit, we're being told there's aliens. I have this whole long life to live. I, how am I going to have to live with aliens? What's that going to be like? Because the way I feel, I'm like, all right, I'm in the middle of the whole deal, right? Like middle yeah. age, truly. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. If there's aliens, cool story, bro. <laughs> I don't care. I just need to know when when my next job is, and you know, yeah, what's got, up. Where? It's it's it, when you're a responsible adult, okay. And I'm not talking about deadbeats. I'm not talking about wackadoos. I'm talking about a, when you're a responsible adult. Really, all you're focused on is uh, doing good work, paying the mortgage, providing for your children, setting yeah. up a little bit of a retirement so that you don't have to work until you die necessarily. <laughs> But, you know, so you can, you know, th that's all you, that's all you do as a responsible adult is try to provide 
for your loved ones and yourself. That's it. And there's at least circle. one responsible adult associated with this podcast. Yes. Yeah, that's Gary. We all know that. But, oh, I but, wasn't going to say who, but. No, we know, Gary. I mean, please, you're the only one who works around here. You're responsible. You're good family man. You know, Darren and I, we love fast cars, cocaine, uh, fire trucks, gunplay. We like jumping out of airplanes. Fun things. Skinny uh, sea doing, um, skinny dipping, skinny skydiving. Yeah. Um, skinny sea doing sounds like you guys just like being naked well not yeah yes i guess i don't yeah. know very it's a standing invitation for you yeah and you've never by the way you've never taken us up on that gary well one of these days i'm sure i'll i'll have a lapse in judgment and i'll join you guys there you go by the way Can't burning Ma burning man was washed out did you see that yes yep. i did i saw somebody picked up chris rock and and skrillex or diplo or somebody on the side of the road and gave him a ride <laughs> I did not see that. Yeah, some famous DJ and Chris Rock were picked up by a fan who just happened to be driving by and gave him a lift in the back of their pickup truck. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that, that does kind of capture the spirit, I hope, of Burning Man. Yeah. You know, that's good. Absolutely. But they were washed out. So the, normally it's in the desert. It's a very trippy environment. You know, they have a big man that they burn at the end, hence the name Burning Man. But everybody dresses up like it's apocalyptic times, you know, and they're all out in the desert and they're roughing it. And I say roughing it. They're living in campers and taking dumps in the in the desert. Yeah, and doing drugs. And, and doing drugs. A lot of people were, were surprised to learn. Not a music festival. Yeah, it's not a music festival. It's just a bunch of hippies out in the desert right. getting weird. Yeah, it's it's uh, they they build these mud pits, right? Yeah, and they crawl around in the mud. Then they all have sex. They do a ton of mind expanding drugs. Yeah. Then they put on post apocalyptic outfits and take pictures with each other. Yeah, it sounds like sounds interesting. I mean, I do that in my neighborhood. I do that in my back. I do that in my neighborhood. I don't need to go all the way to the desert. I've seen you. I've seen yeah. you in your Burning Man gear on your front lawn. Yep, and that hole, that mud hole, I dug in my backyard. Dude, I can't believe it. And then you just held your hose over it and pretended that, that was the rain. Well, dude, that thing's held in a dry lake bed. Yeah. And when it's torrential rain and it all collects there, it's like, dude. Yeah. You know, then you it's a lake. Gotta, you guys got to learn how to do drugs at your house. <laughs> it's that thing, too, where, where when you live below sea level and it floods and everybody's shocked. I'm always like, really? Are you yeah. shocked? You're shocked. Yeah. Or you're, you're – or you're, Build on a cliff, and there's a there's a mudslide or a landslide. Your house is done. They're like, oh my god, out of my house, you dumbass! You built it on the side of a hill. Yeah, in uh, earthquake country. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, um, so we have a big show tonight, and he guessed it, guys and gals. Um, uh, he did. I give a tip a tip of the hat to Darren Leader for knocking that one down. Jake Johnson joining us on the on Riggles Picks today. <laughs> Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Rob Riggle here at Riggle's Picks. Uh, Darren Leader up in Canada on tour um, and uh, with us. One of Hollywood greats, um, a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to give it to him anyway. Jake Johnson. You probably remember him. He's very, very famous for a lot of reasons. One, being a great actor and a great comedian, but he was on New Girl for many, many years. Um, and then, of course, I had the privilege of working with Jake on uh, Let's Be Cops. And then, um, of course, and New Girl, Riggle, you were on that show too. Oh, and I was on New Girl. You know what? That's <laughs> no joke. No joke. I get, I get when when people like see me or stuff uh, at the at the shopping mall, the yeah. Radio Shack. Do they still exist? No. Yes. No. Oh, they're done. I think, I think they they're are. done. I oh, think they're what done. a drag. So I'm when fine. I'm when I'm when I'm at the mall, uh, and people come up, they're like, "Oh my God, I love you on New Girl." I get yeah. new girl more than more than uh, anything else. Well, you Isn't were very crazy? funny on it, man. We well, uh, on the show, we all talked about you, uh, Greenfield, Daniel Moore, and I uh, <laughs> till that show died. Uh, Riggle came in like you always do on every set, and just you murdered everybody. I don't just. think I don't know. If Zoe, Zoe might not have enjoyed it as much though. She's I think funny. I, think I Zoe, love her to death. Yeah. By the way, I'm a, I'm a super fan of hers. But I don't. I, I I walked out like I, I felt bad, like I had done something wrong. I, well, I, I think here's what happened with Zoe. I think she did enjoy it. She had to deal with so much bullshit from me, Max Lamorne, and Damon. So she was just trying. She was also the executive yeah. producer. She's just yeah. trying to keep the ship going. And when an idiot came on and was adding more fuel to the dumb fire, I think she was like, and she had it also with Justin Long. When Justin showed up, she's like. Do you mind saying a line <laughs> on the script? And we're all like, do worse, do worse. 
<laughs> I did feel like I did feel like I was getting the look from from you and Max giving the other like yeah yeah. yeah. Well, because it was, was like, so was like, funny, man. You're such the, a killer. Let the uh, prairie fire. My rise. favorite is what you did for us. Uh, Damon and I still talk about about let's be cops. When Damon and I were just banging our head against a brick wall sometimes being like, where's the joke here? You yeah. came in with a pretty serious role and then would just hang out at Video Village and just pitch jokes and throw <laughs> funny things. <laughs> They're like, man, Riggle's just the best. Oh, dude, I had so much fun down there. We filmed that in Atlanta and that was just a good time. I just remember because awesome. hanging out with you guys. Do you remember when we went? Did we, we were promoting that movie. We went to Chicago, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We went to Wrigley Field. Wriggle yes. gave us, I mean, uh, Ricketts gave us like second row seats. We went to Harry Carey's uh, restaurant. That To me, that was the perfect Chicago day. It yeah, really was. It was almost I like agree. Ferris Bueller's day. Agreed. I got to say on certain jobs, and they happen less and less as I get older because my castmates get younger and more mature, and there was an era where it was like old idiots <laughs> doing it, but press tours used to be so fun. Yes. You'd be like, were, oh, I'm in Philadelphia on somebody, some company's dime, and I'll tell you what I need to do is probably go to a local brewery and then see a Phillies game. <laughs> it was a blast, man. It was always a good time. Um, and you probably, you did a movie with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Um, and I imagine you got to do a pretty big press tour for that thing, didn't you? You know, I don't think I was valuable enough in the Tom Cruise world to, I don't think they were like, Tom Cruise is going to open in China. How about the fat guy from New Girl sitting with him? <laughs> <laughs> How That's... about the guy who made too many jokes in uh, with Rob Riggle on Let's Be Cops? Pass. <laughs> no, I think that man is such a machine that yeah. I did some with him, but whatever we did press, everything was such an out-of-body experience. We were in like downtown Hollywood and he'd be like, He'd be like, check out this unveiling. And then there would be like a 90 foot statue of the movie. And then he just grabs the mic and gives a speech. And then it would go to me and I'd be like, thank you. <laughs> Lost, man. He's got a lot of polish on him, man. He's been uh, in the he, game a long time. He's, 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 the, he's the best number he's, one in the business. Yeah. Oh. oh, Darren, what happened? Did Dar you want the room service today? No. <laughs> 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 oh, I wish that was your oh. room service of just donuts and cookies. Yeah. I'll and... tell you what. I'll tell you what. That was oh my that was my escort, and I left the <laughs> at the front desk. And I, I you said, shouldn't, Don't. you shouldn't. This is going out to the public. You shouldn't. Okay. No, my escort for about town, Rob. I, not that kind of escort. I just have somebody in the local towns that I'm in come take me around. Peterborough, for instance, I'm going to learn the local. Oh, flavor. you mean an escort? <laughs> yes, you meant like an actual historic site escort i like to document <laughs> I, I i apologize I so we apologize. saw darren we saw in your credit card uh statement there was an escort in every city after midnight <laughs> well i like Look, to take night tours <laughs> i like to i like to see the underbelly i like to just feel <laughs> feel the stank you I know guess. what i mean so I, I get these escorts and they just it's fantastic you guys got to try it amazing historical escorts after dark uh, feeling the that. underbelly and the stank <laughs> yeah which and i guess the, works in both categories by the way i think the most important thing that uh, out of all of this radio shack is only an e-commerce business now wow what? i'm sorry okay. well i'm sorry um you remember going a, to, you remember going to radio shack when you were a kid yeah, of course I did. Yeah, that's how I built. Uh, they had like you know, three items. Like yeah. it had a, <laughs> have a capacitor, a soldering gun, Man. and like a like a juicy fruit at the counter, and that was it. And I wonder why they're out of business. Yeah. Well, they really. shouldn't be because uh, Raider Shack's where I built my first sex robot. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me on, Darren. Right. Wonderful to meet you, my friend. All the best to you on tour. Uh, Riggle, keep up the good work, question mark. Okay, thank you. I've been working on my questions and, and my dialogue and my conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, um, so you've got – hold on, though. Uh, uh, yeah. um, we, got, we only have a little bit of time. Jake is <clears> – <throat> Jake is in wild mad um, uh, right now, and he's he, you got your own podcast. What yeah, is I start, here to help. Here to help. We're, it's called We're Here to Help. Do you know Gareth Reynolds? I know the name. You would love him. He's a he's a twenty year friend. Uh, just one of the funniest dudes I've ever met. Shit talker, comedian. Yeah. Uh, he was in the acting game. I think he still is, but then leaned more into writing. Yeah. But he's the guy who kills me with texts over and over. Like he's <laughs> we become text pen pals just because of the laughs. Yeah. 
And then he has a podcast, a really successful one called The Dollop, which he's been doing forever. And he's been in my ear about let's do one together. And I never wanted to. And then finally I said, like, let's try. And what we do is it's a call in advice show. Love this. I love this. We give advice as if you went to a bar (laughs) and you sat down and there were two jackasses (laughs) at the bar. And those jackasses Mm -hmm. have always been on your team. They might give you dog shit advice, but they're with you. <laughs> so every caller, even if we think they're wrong, yeah, you call in the show. You're our friend. Yeah, and, and we're gonna we're, we're gonna try to help you. But I'm gonna tell you what: we might lead you down a dark alley, but maybe there's light when you go through it. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. It's I, been a fun I love fast. I love this concept. It's I been really a do. blast because I want to call. I want to call and just. <laughs> And, and pitch you some problems I'm dealing with just yeah. to hear where you take me. Well, I got to say the, you know, it was his idea more than mine. So I can't take credit for the idea, but what has been the, the funniest part about it? And the internet already proved this to all of us is just how funny random people are. Uh-huh. People Very come in there in like, it'll be like, they'll be like, hi, I'm a mom from like, you know, I'm 42 years old. I live in Tallahassee. She'll start talking and I'll be like, you got the craziest brain in the business. <laughs> The shit coming out of your mouth is hard funny. I've I've always been yeah. an advocate of that, and you know this from improv way yes. back in the day. Truth is always yes. the, funniest. the funniest. Real is always That's the funniest. It. That's exactly yeah. right. Jake, do you guys when you guys get phone calls? Do you ever get calls that just make you guys look at each other and go, "What the fuck?" Yes, we do. So what we do is we try to because some of them in the middle of them, we he and I are on Zoom with each other, but they can't see us. So every once in a while, he'll give me, he'll put his hands up and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> and on those, we just go like, thank you so much. What we learned, we have to experiment. Because at first we were taking them all. And if somebody has a real problem, what happened really fast is you see your weakness. Where they'd be like, you know, I'm going through a divorce. It's really hard. I don't know what to do. And we'd be like, oh, oh, oh. have you, you considered like sticking your head in a turkey's ass? And we were like, this show sucks. <laughs> and we're like, no, no, no. Trivial. Yeah. Give us stupid shit. Yeah, we need the we need the uh, my hubcap keeps coming off when I hit the speed. Yes. Well, right. we had one that Lamorne came on and crushed on it. But one was a lady who was a therapist in her 30s, seemed like a really normal kind of square woman, like from the beginning, just like yeah. nice. Somebody I would judge is boring. She <laughs> uh, was a she was house sitting for her friends, cat sitting, and she has roommates. And she said, so, you know, I did what came naturally. And I just masturbated like a maniac all the time in their living room. And I went like, didn't expect that. Go ahead. And then she goes, <laughs> on the last day, I saw a pet cam set up. Oh. So oh. I'm afraid that my oh. actual friends, a couple have been watching me masturbate. And she goes, watching problematic videos on full volume <laughs> five straight days. And I'm like. Oh. Never would I have guessed this. Yeah. Never. Wow. Yeah. It's always so, the quiet ones. It's, it's always, always the quiet ones. But we're finding like, give us something like that. Yeah. The gold. And we can live. But if whenever there were other ones, Darren, we would just have a lot where we would stop the call. A bunch we aren't going to air. Where we were like, <laughs> right. yeah, I don't I don't know. Like, that's yeah. really heavy stuff. There's, your, there's Maybe you see a therapist. <laughs> have you ever gotten, have you gotten a call yet where you actually were like, Oh, like you get information, you're like, should we call the cops? No, like, thank God. Because uh, that, that yes. that's coming, I think. Yes. I, well, <laughs> have you ever heard of the, it's the, it was an old show out of New York. Uh, it was, and they did a great podcast on it, but it's called The Confession Line. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wait, was this? Um, it was in New York in the 90s. Was it was it wasn't like public access with access with Robin Bird was it? No, but it was it was close. It was a guy okay. who just put he bought a uh, he got a uh, phone number and plastered his number all around New York and I think it was the late eighties and said uh, anonymous confession and people would call up and confess real stuff they did on his answering machine and then he would play it. Oh my god! Oh, it's a great concept, but right? It's it creepy is creepy and scary. Well, that's what it is. There's, it's a podcast on somewhere. Who knows? But it's, I think it's called the Confession Line or something like that. It is such a blast because people would go like, "Hey, uh, yeah, I, I robbed some people last Thursday, and uh, <laughs> it felt that's, great." That's <laughs> it felt not great. Did, do you remember Taxi Cab Confessions? <laughs> yes. Show? So when I was a younger man, uh, I was in Vegas, 
I had had a couple um, drinks and some yeah. things to make me feel nice. I had a historical after midnight escort, and <laughs> we end up in a cab, a buddy and I, in Vegas, and we go. We want to go to wherever we were going, Treasure Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example. No, and Treasure Island, was, high, high. <laughs> yeah, high standards. I remember going the wrong way in the cab, but I was kind of buzzed, and we were talking. Yeah. And the, the the taxi cab driver, he's kind of chiming in, and I'm like. It's just taking a really long time, but I'm telling stories about things that oh. I did recently. We get to where we needed to go. We get out, and it was like SWAT, but there was HBO production. They're like, sign this, sign this, please, sign this, please. Did you sign? sign? They wanted me to, hell no, I Good didn't. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you, man. No way. I was, I was like, whoa, I thought I was getting arrested. Yeah. Well, I, I always think when I see those shows, because I know they have to do the consents after, uh-huh. Yeah. Why are these fools signing? It's their shot, man. You know what? I'll, I'll yeah. tell you what. I was in a place where I was talking so freely, and I was buzzed. And I imagine if I was like three or four drinks more, I would have been like, whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, totally. Do you know who was? Yeah, do you know who was one of the cab drivers on that who? show? Todd Phillips, the amazing, really? d- the director of the Joker, Hangovers, all the Hangover. Really? Todd Filler, he he's a young man, but he was one of the drivers and guys asking questions. Uh, I thought you were going to do a bit and say me because I have a cabbie vibe. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Jake, if you ever decide to come out with your own line, yeah, make it the cabbie line. Cabbie line. Because uh, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at a New York cabbie who's just yeah. pulled a triple shift. A hundred percent. And you pull up to the intersection. Do you've yeah. had cab drivers like this, and they just. They just oh, yeah. nod off. They nod what, off at the, at the red light. And you have to I, go, pow, 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 pow. Yeah. They go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And then they go, <laughs> Where to, man? Where to, buddy? Where to, buddy? Oh. My, my big thing with cabbies is, <laughs> at the beginning was they always wanted to tell me they knew me, but they weren't a fan of the stuff I did. <laughs> Why do people you know, do that? You'd get in there. It was New York cabs, especially when New Girl was really hot when that first started. I'd be in New York doing press, and it was, I would like, you know, do press. And I'm like, all right, let's bar hop a little bit. And then you're jumping around, you jump in a cab, and they turn around, they go, I goes, hey, you that guy? And I go, like, depends. There's a bunch of us who look similar, and I'm not going to lead out with yes until you give me a clue. <laughs> and then they go, you're on that show about the girls? And I'm like, well, there's a lot of guys on it. So, yeah. And then they'll go, yeah, you're okay, man, but I don't like it. And I'd be like, thank <laughs> you. Now we got a good 15 minutes together because I'm going right. back to, like, Queens. And they would right. go. And I don't know. I, I've been in that situation long. too, where they where they criticize the work or yeah. the show or the and you you go well now what for the next fifteen minutes yeah. I guess because uh, I don't want to apologize. I no, I'm not, like and it. I also don't want to go. I don't want to be like that little bitchy guy who's like, well, I'm not a fan of you. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to go. Yeah, they go like, yeah. I'm not into it, and you got to go like, I hear you, man. <clears throat> The worst, thing, the worst thing. I get thing it. I don't care. That, that I the worst thing, and I don't know if you've experienced it. It's when they do the. Why, where do I know you? How do yes, I know you? Because then you go. Ah, I don't. You know. I don't go. You know. I always. I always answer. You know. Did we go to high school together? Go, no. 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 <laughs> yeah. no. Like you. You're an actor or something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you go. Yeah. But then they want your whole resume, and yeah, then you, so you start. Hey, I just I, say I'm not going down IMDb. Yeah. Not going I, down. I, but for, in the beginning, I used to. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I used to go with maybe this, nope, maybe this, nope, maybe this, nope. <laughs> it's maybe so the, this. the only reason not to do it, <sighs> and this is what I don't think people get, is it's not I'm so busy or don't bother me. It's just so humiliating. It is. Where you're like, <laughs> uh, I played Grumpy Guy and Smurfs. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, okay. A little indie out of Dallas called Spilt Milk. Nope. Okay, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Okay, a small cameo, but hopefully memorable on the show with the unit. No, okay. Uh, let me wipe this sweat off my forehead. Okay, next up. <laughs> you're like, this is fucking shameful. It is. It's and then, down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and then. And, and, and then they're just not sad. Nothing satisfies them, you know. Nothing. And then they name some other huge actor, and you go, "Oh, that's not me." Yeah. No, that no, no, no. is Paul Rudd, my friend. <laughs> and then they go, "They was for me." It's always no, 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 no. You no, come on, man. You were on Seinfeld, uh, Putty. Oh, you get Putty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I never would have thought it. I go well no, between that's Patrick Warburton between very, Max very Greenfield, me. Damon and you, your new nickname is Putty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm putting a text out. Putty is a perfect wriggle nickname. <laughs> oh my.
my God. Oh, That's so good Jake, stuff. Um, it's so good to see you. By the way, I bumped you into do, Darren. Uh, I bumped into Jake uh, the other day. We went to see a movie uh, that uh, a friend of ours uh, directed. Um, and Great I have, Josh I have a little, little, little part in it, Josh. Yeah. And uh, it was called Strays. It's still out in theaters. It's a great movie. Will Ferrell, Jamie Foxx. And so, but, but Jake and I hadn't seen each other in a long time because we just lives yeah, getting yeah. in the way. So it was so nice to reconnect with you then. And I now felt the same you, way, man. Yeah, you yeah. coming in here right before you start your show. So thank you for taking time to join us, buddy. I really yeah. appreciate it. Really fun to see it. Darren, great to meet you, bud. You too, Jake. Great you, guys keep up, you guys keep up the good work. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Jake. Calling your show with something super weird. I would, I would love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he'll do it too. He's got plenty. <laughs> I love it. All see right, you bud. guys. See you, Jake. Thank you.